What's up guys, welcome to another video, first video of 2021. And one of the things I wanted to do in 2021 is to add more value to you guys watching this channel. And so we're gonna be doing that. I'm starting the year off right by doing a tutorial about how to do a really quick, easy photo slideshow in Premiere Pro. I'll drop that right now. Hey, thanks again for checking out this video. My name is Anthony and I make videos that I hope will teach and inspire you to make better videos. If that's something you're into, consider subscribing to this channel and hit that bell notification so that you're notified every time I post another video. If you find anything useful in this video, make sure to hit that like button, that thumbs up that's right about either one of my fingers should be pointing to it right there. Anyway, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, we're here in front of the computer. And before we get started, I wanted to let you know that this method works for any size photos, whether they're landscape or portrait. We're going to be using a 16 by 9 timeline, but you can use any timeline you want to. And this method will work for any of that. The reason that I even had the idea for this is because actually the end of 2020 was not very good for me at all. There were some deaths that happened really close to me. One of those, I actually had to do a photo slideshow for the funeral, but that got me thinking as video creators, as content creators, sometimes we have to do those kind of things and having that skill set to do something like this really quickly will come in handy. So I wanted to pass that on to you guys. Let's jump right in here and I'm going to use my son back in 2019 when he was playing baseball, when back when youth baseball was still a thing. Hopefully we get back to that soon. Personally, I love it. Be safe. But uh, man, I love some youth baseball. Let's let's jump in real quick. First thing we're going to do is import the photos and just navigate to where those photos live. All right, got those. And I, I put the whole folder in there, but Premiere Pro only sees JPEGs. It does not look at raw photos. So the only ones that are in there, there aren't any duplicates. You can see here all of the JPEGs came in and none of the raw photos came in. And then I also took some team pictures. They're all already JPEGs. So I'll just drag those in as well. After you've got your photos dragged into your project, what you're going to do is start a new sequence. Click new sequence. So now that we've got our timeline done, what we need to do is go into some settings to make it easier for ourselves when we drag in these photos. So if I go to photo and I just drag this photo in, it's automatically set to be exactly five seconds long. So we're going to go up to Premiere Pro preferences. Then we're going to go to timeline. Timeline is where you can set your default settings for a bunch of different stuff like your transition defaults, your still image duration when you drag in a still image, how long is it going to last on the timeline by default. And right here, this is where you want to change your duration for those photos. And for that, I want it to do five seconds. This is where you get to choose how long your video is. If you've got a hundred videos at five seconds, it's going to be 500 seconds long, 500 seconds long divided by 60. So that's eight minutes and 20 seconds long. I actually am not sure how many photos that I have here, but that doesn't matter. We can change kind of the length of that later. I think five seconds is a good starting point here. So we're going to start with this one photo and with this one photo, we're going to add some motion to it and we're going to add transitions in so that we can put those on all of the other photos. What you would normally do to add motion in Premiere Pro is to go effects controller and you'll just play with your scale and position, but there's a better way to do it in this case. I'm going to go to effects, we're going to type in transform and then we're going to drag the transform right there on it. Next, I want to make this clip last six seconds instead of five seconds. And I, I know that might be a little bit confusing because we just spent a lot of time making sure that it was five seconds, but stick with me. This is for the transition part of it and it's, it'll make sense later. Okay. So here in transform, we're going to put a keyframe on scale and on rotation. We'll go to the end here at six seconds, make sure we still see it and we'll scale it up just a little bit. Don't want to go too much, maybe 110 to 115 just and see what that looks like. 
Yeah, that's nice. And on rotation, you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. In fact, you can kind of move it around using position or any of these other things that you want to. Now, these black spaces in here on the bottom left and the top right, don't worry about those too much right now. We're going to fix those in just a little bit. So we'll keep that keyframe there. Go over to six seconds and rotate it the opposite way. That rotation might be a bit much. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's probably a bit much. So I'm going to, again, just kind of tone it down. Maybe negative two to positive two on the rotation so it's not too much. So I just realized that I actually need to stretch this clip out to seven seconds so that I have one second in the beginning and one second at the end of pre and post motion and effects so that it blends better with the next photo coming in. Speaking of effects, the last effect we want to put on here is a blur so that it kind of blurs out and fades in to the next photo and previous photo. Uh, it'll make sense once you see it. So at the beginning, I'm going to hit a keyframe there. And it's going to start in pretty strong. Go out to one second uh, exactly, and then keyframe that back out. Then we'll go over here to six seconds, drop another keyframe, and at the end here, keyframe it back out again. Okay, believe it or not, we're almost done with this photo slideshow. The next thing we want to do is to chop off the beginning first second of this clip so that the keyframes that we did first are before the actual clip starts and we'll chop off the end so that the keyframes at the end are after the clip ends. That's super important for the transitions. And now we're ready to bring in the rest of our photos. Jeez, that's a lot of photos. It's 38 minutes long and I'm not too worried about length here, but if you are, then I'll show you a way here at the end where you can kind of play with that time. You won't be able to knock 38 minutes down to 10 minutes or anything like that but you can kind of mess with that time and get maybe 15 minutes down to 10 minutes or something like that the reason you don't want to do 38 minutes into 10 minutes is because those photos will just be flying by so we're going to go to that first photo that we already added all those effects to and we're just going to copy these effects the transform and the gaussian blur to all of these all at the same time just We'll go in and make sure that one's not selected. So paste those in. We've got that going on. It should be going on to all of them. Yep. Now at this point, you'll go into your effects controls under motion and just make sure all of the photos are scaled and framed properly. Like this one might be a little bit too big and it might be a little bit too tall. The, the kid's head's cut off up at the top. So we're going to scale that down and we're going to bring it down so that it's framed properly. And what you'll notice is because we used the transforms, the, uh, the motion is not affected. So we still have that motion. And we'll take care of those black edges in just a second. So we want to go through all of these photos and make sure all of the photos are framed in properly. The next thing that we have to do is add our transitions. To add our transitions, I'm just going to hold Command and select all of these ends hit shift D and that adds our default transition because we used the blur on every single one of these it's gonna blur in for all of them except for the first one because it doesn't do any pre on the first one so if I select all of these and just move these up by hitting shift command arrow then I can drag this first one down and now that blurry blurriness happens at the beginning of that one so and now you see how it kind of blurs out and the next one blurs in as well as the transform that happens on the cross dissolve I think that's just a really nice touch that you can use to make your your photo slideshow stand out a little bit more than just a normal fading slideshow. Now, I'm not a huge fan of having these black areas. So what I like to do from this point is nest them. You can either nest them by right clicking and going to nest, or what I did was I made a shortcut for it and I put that shortcut on Command Shift N 
And now I can call that uh, photo slideshow. Now I'll drag this one up to the second and make a copy down here. I'll scale this one way up. 200 will, will be good for this one. And then again, we'll go to our blur effect. Gaussian blur is fine. And we'll put a really heavy blur there so you really can't tell what it is. And now as we go through the slideshow again, all those black edges turn into kind of an environmental color that you can see. And it still maintains the movement from the photo that we created. I almost forgot. The last thing we're going to do is to kind of retime how this photo slideshow is interacting. So um, the last thing we want to do is to go and nest both of these nests. All right, so that's nested. Now all we have to do is play with the time. So I'm going to go in time remapping speed, and then I can just adjust that time to go up and down. See where it kind of makes that sharp downturn. That's where the end of the video is. So if you want this video to be instead of 38 minutes long, if you want it to be right at 30 minutes, you can kind of go in and estimate that 30 minute line right there. If you want it to be exact, you're going to have to play with it a little bit more, but that's the general idea of it. So now we still have the same photo slideshow and it's going just a little bit quicker. This is a really great tool to use if you're putting a photo slideshow to music and you want the photo slideshow to end right when the music ends. Hope you found this video useful or entertaining. If you did, leave it a like. If you did not, leave it two dislikes. It's an old joke. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I upload a new video. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. See you in the next one.